already. Welcome to my channel. Today I want to try something different. Up till now I've only made videos with my music and I was just curious to see what would happen if I made a video with a voiceover like this and have a more story orientated video. On YouTube I have seen several content creators do permanent challenges with additional rules to make it more difficult and I found this concept very appealing and so after thinking about it for a while how I could do this myself I came up with my own permadef challenge with the following rules the first rule is start a new save in the permadef mode and put all the settings to the maximum the second rule is you are not allowed to use any starships or multi-tools from previous unlocked expeditions or twitch drops. You can only use what the game gives you. However, you are allowed to acquire exhausted appearance items, for example a helmet or a cape, if you want to do so. I myself I like to use the fleet commander's cape and as soon as I have access to the Nexus, I always modify my appearance to the character I am comfortable playing. The third rule is, you are not allowed to use the restore save point option to prevent yourself from dying. And the fourth rule is, you are not allowed to use duplication glitches. And the fifth and final rule is, you have to find a sentinel multi-tool and a sentinel interceptor in a system you've discovered. Make a nice picture of your new ship on the planet or in space for the thumbnail of your video if you are a YouTube content creator and then bring it back home safely to your freighter and do all this as quickly as you can. In preparation for this video I tried this challenge several times to see how it worked and I completely died the first couple of times because I was way too reckless or wanted to do everything way too fast. There are always additional problems occurring unexpectedly, popping up at a time most inconvenient and before you know it you're already one or two hours deep into the safe and instead of searching for dissonant systems you are just trying to survive because in the permadeath maxed out mode you only have a minimum of protection and a minimum of firepower while the rest of the universe is as harsh as can be but you know that's why those permadeath challenges are so much fun to do it's exhilarating not because it's easy but because it's hard in my first successful attempt, I managed to complete this challenge in 7 hours and 38 minutes. And with this new save I want to break that record. See if I can shave off at least 1 hour. And with all that being said, let's begin. After adjusting the permadef mode and starting the game, I landed on an icy planet called Royce 22 and 5 in a geek system called Junk 18 in the Euclid galaxy and in the French language the word Royce means kings which is a nice little detail and then it's all about surviving I start running run like the wind because my ship is out there somewhere straight ahead and I need to get there as soon as possible because my asset protection and life support are already starting to diminish. I start mining, I start to loot stuff, gathering resources as much as I can because I need to repair my scanner and my visor so I can pinpoint the location of my ship and I start scanning the surroundings. And when that's done, I start scanning everything, especially the planet's fauna. Because if I manage to complete that, I will unlock 1500 nanites 
And in the beginning I have to say, that is a pretty huge amount, which gets me going a long way in acquiring a couple of very essential blueprints. And while I'm sitting in my ship, waiting for my hazard protection and life support to regenerate, I use the photo mode to have a bird's eye view of the surroundings, looking for nearby settlements and caves, so I have an idea where to go next. In the cave, I try to mine as much cobalt as I can without overloading my inventory, and cobalt will come in handy later on for making iron batteries for fueling my hazard protection. In the cave I also found quite a few humming socks with albumin pearls, which is a pretty nice find. I can sell them in the space station, generate in-game currency, so I can start buying stuff. Another very lucky find was an unknown grave, which not only gave me the first glimpse, but also the blueprint for the optical drill, which, so early on in a save, is a very useful tool to have. And then I also found the last species I had to scan. One of those rare underground ones, which are always pretty difficult to find. And with those discoveries complete, I collected 150 nanites. And then after some more mining and gathering resources, I was able to repair the pulse engine, the launch thrusters, and take off. I started scanning the terrain for settlements to see if I could find some more nanites or perhaps unlock the coordinates of a crashed ship or ancient burial site. And then it was time to visit the space station. And by that time I was already over an hour into the site. I upgraded my exosuit, checked the armory cabinet and found this very nice alien multi tool with a black crystal, which is quite uncommon. Of course I couldn't buy it, I just didn't have enough currency, so early on in the game, but I might come back for it later, because it does look pretty cool. And then I started selling the stuff I had acquired and didn't need, and ended up with about 600,000 units. On the space station I also saw another traveler, and of course I had to ask him for the second unknown grave. Another lucky find, so far I've been pretty lucky in this safe. I then visited the ancient ruin I had unlocked earlier, got some free parking at a nearby trading post, started scanning the fauna, and again I was pretty lucky, because there were only six species on that planet. And then out of nowhere, I had an unlucky encounter with a sentinel. Lost nearly all of my protection. Almost died. But I managed to quickly repair my damage to life support. And dug a hole to hide. But that was a close call. I then completed the final scan and collected 1500 nanites. Which gave me a total of 3000 plus which, under normal circumstances, is not that much. But in the beginning of a permanent save, that is pretty amazing. I then visit the second unknown grave on the next planet, hoping it would give me another interesting blueprint. But it only gave me a C-class pulse spitter module, which I probably would not be using. But I could always sell it for nanites. And while there, I completed another final scan. It was one of those biomes with only one species. So that was quickly done. And it gave me another 250 nanites. I then followed up on the Awakenings mission I had unlocked earlier while I was in space and visited the crashed starship, which was a very nice explorer. It also gave me the blueprint for the advanced mining laser, which was a very welcome addition to my multi-tool. Although, I couldn't install it right away, because I needed two wiring looms, but I would take care of that later. And equally interesting, it also gave me an S-Class module for the bolt caster, 
again wasn't able to install it yet, but I would take care of that later. The Explorer Starship turned out to be a B-Class, from which I cannibalized a nice B-Class Starship Shield module, which would come in handy later. And after claiming the crashed Starship, I returned to space, got a call from Nana, and visited the Nexus. First thing I did in the Nexus was unlock the fleet commander's gate and modify my appearance into secret agents 123XRT. By then I was almost two hours in the safe and time was ticking. I collected additional nanites from Helios and Eris and then it was time to do some shopping. I had almost accumulated 4000 nanites and already unlocked a few essential blueprints through playing the game. First thing I bought was the hazmat gauntlet for 200 nanites, so I could get to the personal refiner for 900 nanites. Another must have so early in the game, so I didn't have to rely on the portable refiner that much, and could refine continuously no matter where I was, on a planet, in space, or wherever. For my starship I bought the teleport receiver blueprint, which is always handy to have, and the modules for the efficient thrusters and outdoor charger, so I didn't have to worry about running out of launch fuel that much. I also bought the economy scanner, the large rocket tubes, and the non-linear optics for the photon cannon. And for my multi-tool I bought the barrel ionizer for the bolt caster. I then teleported back to the space station, sold the explorer for scrap, which almost gave me one and a half million units, and then it was time to do some shopping there as well. First I bought as many wiring looms as I could, and completed the installation for the advanced mining laser, and second I bought an additional slot for my multi-tool so I could install the bolt caster and the S-Class module. I wasn't able to install the barrel ionizer yet, because I needed 4 units of glass, and for that I needed the personal refiner, which I also hadn't installed yet, because I didn't have enough oxygen. I installed the efficient thruster module in my starship, and the first stage of the hyperdrive. I didn't have enough chromatic metal to complete the installation, but I would take care of that later. I also installed the B-class shielding I had taken from the crashed Explorer, as well as modules for the hyperdrive and the pulse engine. I then bought as much chromatic metal from the shop in the station as I could, but I still came 6 units short to complete the hyperdrive installation. So I first had to go down to one of the planets to get more oxygen, so I could install a personal refiner. But before I did that, I bought a couple of planetary emergency charts, so I could loot a crashed freighter. And while there on the planet, I looted a salvage frigate module, which would come in handy later on. After that I mined some copper, so I could refine it into chromatic metal, and then took off to visit the last planet in the system, which had a poisonous bio. But before that I had an encounter with the fugitive pirate. I blew up his ship and claimed the reward of 173,000 units. And while scouting the poisonous planet for some free parking, I completely by accident found another crashed freighter, and of course I had to check it out. I never say no to free loot. And while there I also started refining copper into chromatic metal. In the crashed freighter I found a second salvage frigate module and a warp hypercore and a cargo bulkhead. And with enough chromatic metal refined, I completed the hyperdrive installation fueled it with a warp hypercore I just found, and I was ready to start the search for dissonant systems. But before I took off, I did some more scanning. The planet had 12 species, 
and the bonus for scanning them all was 3000 nanites. And considering that amount, I decided to give it a try, in case I needed to buy additional blueprints. I started scanning the fauna, and I found this adorable Dino, and another nice find, these navigation data units, very useful for exchanging them into planetary emergency charts. With enough chromatic metal refined, I installed a hazmat gauntlet and then gathered some more oxygen and completed the installation of the personal refiner as well. I also completed the scan of all the land and air species and now only had to do the three remaining water creatures, which should be doable, although of course you never know. The sea creatures are always a bit tricky, especially the last one, which almost always is one of those shark-like alpha predators, which only appears at a certain depth, and considering the little amount of hazard protection and life support I had, finding that one could be a real challenge. The first two were easy to find, as expected, and to illustrate how tricky it could be, it cost me one life, because I couldn't get back up fast enough, and considering you only have three, before you die for real. That was a little bit too close for comfort. So yeah, I was really contemplating if it was worth the trouble to continue the search for the last secret here, so I could collect those 3000 nanites and maybe lose another life, maybe even die in the process, or just play it safe and give up on that bonus. And then, just when I was about to give up and call it a day, I spotted that last sea creature and collected the bonus. And just for fun, I also tested the bolt custom on a few sentinels and collected a bunch of crystal sulfide. And with all that done, I returned to the Nexus to buy some more blueprints. And considering how weak my hazard protection and life support were, I decided to invest most of my nanites in my exhaust protection, starting with the oxygen rerouter, the shield lattice, radiation deflector, toxin suppressor, thermic layer, coolant network, and neural stimulator. I also bought extra protection for my starship with the ablative armor. Not sure how to install them yet, or which one to install first, but I would figure that out later, depending on what kind of planet I would be landing on in my search for the Sentinel Starship. And then I took off to do my first warp jump and explore the universe. By then I was almost three hours into the save, and time was ticking. I found the first dissonance system at a distance of 19 light years, and considering my ship had a range of almost 250 light years, that was an easy jump. I visited the space station, upgraded my exhaust, had a look at the multi tool, and then sold some stuff I didn't need. And while doing all this, I noticed this cute looking Raza starship, almost identical to mine except for the color. Instead of being red, it was white. I bought a quantum computer from a Viking trader, so I could install the oxygen rerouter in my exosuit. And while in space scanning the system, searching for a distant planet, I unlocked the Rebel Star mission. But I couldn't find any distant planet, so I checked the star map again to see what was going on, and to my surprise, the system was no longer dissonant, and it's just weird. It just randomly changed. I'm 100% sure it was dissonant when I entered the system. But okay, oh well. So I had to look for another system that really was dissonant, and I found one at 32 light years and made the jump. Again I visited the space station, 
and looked at the armory cabinet to see what they had to offer. And this time it was another very nice alien multi-tool. I then upgraded my exosuit. And then I was off to scan the system to see if I had a little bit more luck. But unfortunately, I found this forsaken planet. And I was like, oh man, isn't that one of those lifeless planets? where you can't find any sentinel ships. So I landed to make sure, and yes, it was completely lifeless. So I just wasted another warp jump. It's so typical. Up to now I'd been pretty lucky with all the final scans and the blueprints, but it looked like my luck was about to change. Although it was a nice opportunity to harvest some radiant shards. So yeah, back to the drawing board. Let's try this again. I found another dissonance system at 17 light years, but it was already discovered by another gamer, so that didn't work either. The rule is, I have to find a sentinel multi-tool and sentinel interceptor in a system discovered by myself. So yeah, another warp jump wasted, but you know, okay, I'm not giving up. Back to the star map. I found another dissonance system at 32 light years and I thought okay let's try this one but again it was already discovered by another gamer and I was like oh man really I'm just wasting my warp jumps and getting nowhere pretty quick and you know if I continue like this I will have to visit another crashed freighter to look for warp hypercores or start mining resources to produce antimatter and antimatter housing so I could craft warp cells. Or maybe, if I was very lucky, find a few storm crystals and make those warp hypercores myself. So back to the star map. And luckily I found another dissonance system at 54 light years. And I was like, please, please let this be the right one. And then when I came out of warp, I entered the system where I could pick up the free freighter. I was so caught up in search for dissonance systems, I had completely forgotten to count my warps. But I thought, okay, while well, we're here, I might as well take it. The freighter makes the journey a lot easier, with additional storage and easy system scanning. And to save the time, I skipped the battle and flew right in. I claimed the freighter. It was a very nice B-class, accompanied by a very nice B-class frigate, specialized in trade. And with the salvage frigate modules I get at earlier, I unlocked the blueprints for the scanner room and a teleport chamber. And then I started renovating the interior, taking out all the parts I didn't need and replacing them with the stuff I liked. Although I wasn't able to install the scanner room nor the teleport chamber right away because I didn't have the required resources yet. So I decided to combine my search for the distant planet with building the interior of my freighter. I visited the space station to upgrade my exosuit and started scanning the planets. And while doing this, I kind of fell into the continuation of the Rebel Star mission I had started earlier. And I thought, oh well, might as well do that too, just to get it out of the way. So I destroyed the cargo pods of the derelict freighter, which alerted the pirates and got into a little fight. And then I continued my quest. I found this mechanical moon with corrupted sentinels, and I was like, isn't that one of those exotic worlds with only one species and no sentinel starships? And so yes, that it was. And so I wasted another world jump. But I did scan the single life form and collected a 250 nanite bonus. I tried to look if there maybe was another planet with corrupted sentinels in the system, which sometimes happens. But no, so nothing else to do but return to the star map and try again. But by then I had run out of warp fuel and I had to reprioritize my activities.
activities. I decided to visit the barren planet, which is part of the desert biome, and those are among my favorites. Quite often they have blue skies, are reasonable, peaceful, and provide a nice array of resources. While hovering above the surface, I spotted the cave, and in need for cobalt, I landed and went on the ground to do some serious mining. And look at that. And the planet only had six species, so I started scanning the fauna again. And there it was, complete in just a few minutes, earned 1500 nanites, just like that. I went back to my freighter, built a scanning room, so I could scan the entire system all at once. And after that I went to the space station to exchange navigation data for more planetary emergency charts, with a hope to find crashed freighters and possibly loot some warp hypercores, because I had barely any resources to craft them my own. But wasn't lucky, so I decided to mine more ferrite dust, so I could make antimatter housing and a couple of warp cells, so I could make at least a few more warp jobs. In the star map I found another distant system at 55 light years, called Medical 3. I made a jump, summoned my freighter and scanned the system, but didn't find any dissonant planets. And I was like, man, really? So I went back to space to check the star map, and yes, there it was. It was marked as a dissonant system, but no dissonant planets. And that never happened to me, but I was like, okay, you know, we must continue the show, so keep on searching. I still got some more fuel left to make one, maybe three more jumps. I opened the star map and found another dissonant system at 207 light years, called non Grantes. I summoned my freighter, scanned the planets, and again it was a complete lifeless forsaken planet. And I was like, man, really? I just didn't have any luck finding a planet with a sentinel starship. So again back into space, back into the star map, I had forgotten how many warp jumps I had already made. I was so deep into the search, I just lost count. Anyway, I managed to find another distance system at 134 light years, and I was like, oh man, please let this be the right one because by that time I was already about four and a half hours into the sail, and the time was seriously starting to tick away. So I made the jump, summoned by freighter, scanned the planets, and there it was. A caustic nightmare planet with corrupted sentinels. Not exactly my first choice, because planets like that could be pretty hazardous, but okay. I'll take it. I landed on the planet, left my starship to continue on foot, but before I did that, I made sure I had enough fuel in my launch thrusters in case I needed to summon my starship. I started scanning for dissonance resonators, and luckily I found one right away. And when I got there, I tried to keep a safe distance with as little life support as the protection and firepower I had. It was better not to confront the sentinels, because I simply wouldn't be able to survive a direct encounter. So I took the inverted mirror and ran, mined some more radiant charge, and again scanned for more. And while doing this, I also completed the fauna scan which gave me a nice bonus of 1000 nanites. But of course that was not why I was there. I needed to find at least three inverted mirrors to be able to claim the sentinel interceptor. And I also needed an echolocator. I continued scanning, but had a much luck 
until a few minutes later I found another dissonance resonator while slowly but surely burning through all my ion batteries. Although it could have been foreseen on a planet like this, but still my hazard protection consumed those batteries far quicker than I had anticipated. My time was starting to run out. Again I kept a safe distance and took the second inverted mirror and ran. I started considering installing the toxin suppressor. But for this I needed ammonia, silver and copper. And I had none of that in my inventory. I mined some more cobalt and ferrite dust so I could craft more ion batteries. Because in the raid my hazard protection was consuming them, I wouldn't be able to stay long on the planet. I continued scanning and found another distance resonator. I took the third inverted mirror. I now had enough to claim a crashed sentinel ship. That was good. But still I had to find an echolocator. So I continued scanning and found another one. En route I mined some ammonia for when I needed to install the toxin suppressor. And shortly thereafter I had this lucky find of two dissonance resonators paired closely together, which strangely enough hadn't shown up in the scan, but of course I took the inverted mirrors and again started running. I also started refining the radiant charge I didn't need into nanites, a welcome addition for when I might need to buy some more blueprints or modules. I continued my search for the echolocator. I found another dissonance resonator and started firing from a safe distance. Took the inverted mirror and ran. I now had six inverted mirrors, but still no echo locator. I started mining copper, the second element for the toxin suppressor. I now only needed 16 units of silver and for sure I would be able to buy that from a trader on the space station. But before I would run out of iron batteries completely, I decided to give the search for the echolocator one more try. I only needed one, right? And so I found another distance resonator. I approached it carefully, kept a safe distance and started firing. And then I had a scare of my life. Completely out of nowhere one of those big corrupted sentinels jumped me and with one blow took out almost all of my life support. It damaged my oxygen recycler and nearly killed me. I had to run away as quickly as I could, but still I needed that echo locator. So I went back quietly and a little sneaky and tried again. I found another dissonance resonator and hoped it might give me the echo locator, but alas, it gave me another inverted mirror, of which I already had more than enough. I realized it might take a little longer than expected, and considering the rate I was burning through my ion batteries, I decided to summon my starship and go back to the space station to do some upgrade to my hazard protection. I bought some silver from a Viking trader and installed a toxin suppressor. Purchased an S-Class Toxin Protection Module and installed that too. I also bought a few additional slots for my multi-tool and an S-Class Shield Module for my exosuit and installed it together with a shield lattice. I bought a Boltcaster S-Class Module, installed it and placed the Boltcaster itself in a supercharged slot I just purchased, leveling up the damage potential of my multi-tool from 1400 to almost 2200, which was pretty cool and for sure would be helpful when encountering sentinels. And so with improved shielding, improved life support and improved firepower, I returned to the caustic nightmare planet finish the job. 
From the air, I spotted a dissonant resonator. I landed nearby, kept a safe distance, started firing, expecting to get another inverted mirror. But of course, as it always goes, just when you think it might take a little longer, you find exactly what you're looking for. And in this case, that was the echolocator. By then I was a little over five hours into the safe. And with a bit more luck, I might round it all up in maybe 10 or 20 minutes. So I went back to my ship, activated the locator into a navigation marker and took off. I gained access to the harmonic interface, deactivated the multi-tool seal and located the dissonance spike. I took the Sentinel multi-tool, which was a common C-class, and took off to find the Sentinel starship. Used the Highland Brain to locate the ancient site, converted the brain into docile, returned to the Sentinel starship, repaired the pilot interface and claimed the ship. And then I took a nice picture in flight for my personal archive. And then I brought it home to my freighter, where in the hangar I took another nice picture for the thumbnail. And then I clocked my save at 5 hours and 44 minutes. A no personal best. If you're interested in playing this Interceptor Permadeath Extreme Challenge 2, here are the rules again. The first rule is, start a new save in the Permadeath mode and put all these settings to the maximum. The second rule is, you are not allowed to use any starships or multi-tools from previous unlocked expeditions or Twitch drops. You can only use what the game gives you. However, you are allowed to acquire exosuit appearance items, for example a helmet or a cape, if you want to do so. I myself, I like to use the Fleet Commander's cape, and as soon as I have access to the Nexus, I always modify my appearance to the character I'm comfortable playing. The third rule is, you are not allowed to use the Restore Save Point option to prevent yourself from dying. The fourth rule is, you are not allowed to use duplication glitches. And the fifth and final rule is, you have to find a Sentinel multi-tool and a Sentinel interceptor in a system you have discovered. Make a nice picture of your new ship on the planet or in space for the thumbnail of your video if you are a YouTube content creator and then bring it back home safely to your freighter and do all this as quickly as you can. I've also put the rules in the video description so you can read them at your own convenience or copy paste them if you like. And let me know in the comments below at what time you've clocked your save and when you've made a video about it and uploaded it to your channel. Let me know too. I'm planning to create a playlist of all the gamers who did this permadeath challenge and rank them in the order of best times, like a sort of Hall of Fame kind of thing. I'm very curious to see what you all come up with and if you've beaten my personal best. I for sure will try again next week and post another video like this to tell you all about it. Permadeath challenges are not just exhilarating, they are addictive. Okay guys, thank you for watching and see you again next time.